Thank you. And I have nothing to disclose. So I want to show you this simple method that can sig significantly improve your data quality called Stark, which basically transfers the sad-looking TSNR maps into the sprite-looking TSNR maps. So here I'm showing you this uh, conventional single TR fMRI signal map, which is the bread and butter of most of the fMRI studies that I've seen in the past days. And like most fMRI data, also this image comes from a multi-channel array, which means that the single image actually consists of up to 32 or even more um, sub-images from the individual channels. And usually these sub-images are combined in methods like sum of squares, where you basically add up the squares of the individual elements in this equation to get to this um, magnitude image and a corresponding time core stability. And I believe you can think of this equation just as a special case of a weighted sum or a weighted averaging, if you want, where you basically simply average all the individual channels with respective weighting factors. And in this special case, the weight factors are just the signal itself. And I believe that this kind of a combination makes a lot of sense for anatomical imaging because it optimizes the image SNR. For example, here in these four selected channels, you can see, unsurprisingly, that the signal distribution is very heterogeneous. And combining these images based on the signal strength means that, like at a location like here, or here, or here, um, these um, green and blue channels here would get higher weights, and reducing the more noisy voxel from those other channels, effectively increasing the signal strength and image SNR. In fMRI, however, we don't really care about image SNR. We don't care about signal strength. What we care about is stability and tSNR. And in the individual coil-specific space, we actually do have a lot of sources of, of uh, variants and, and see this uncoupling between image SNR and TSNR. So here, for example, you can see all kinds of sources of fluctuations. We have these interference patterns over here. We have a bad crupper ghost in this element, some other phase inconsistency in that one, with suspective reductions in the TSNR maps. Now, since we desire high stability, why not simply change these weight factors from the signal to the stability? and therefore giving the more stable channels the chance to account for the less stable channels independent of their signal, which effectively already increases the resulting TSNR. But we can also easily go one step further, for example, considering that we have noise coupling between channels of thermal or physiological nature. So we can actually view these Ws here as completely free parameters that can be optimized and to maximize the final TSNR. So in this approach, we actually wiggle these uh, Ws around in an iterative fashion until the final TSNR map, uh, map is, is maximized and converged. So these Ws now uh, contain both. They contain the channel-specific stability in every voxel, and inversely, they also contain the cross-channel noise correlation. And please note that these kind of weight factors are stationary, so they are the same across um, all the time points, so we're not really screwing up the quantitative um, stability across time. And when you compare the two different TSNR maps here, you can see that we improve the TSNR to 100%, especially in those artifact suffering regions, which nicely translates also to nicer looking functional activation maps. Here, for example, you can see for a certain threshold, of course, that the um, sum of squares only gives you these few noisy voxels while the stark stability weighted approach um, seems to show you nicer ribbon features. And also in the temporal domain, you can see that the Stark in blue um, has much more stable time courses compared to the more of, uh, noisy red ones from some of squares. And please also note the conserved effect size here for the task-induced activity in the ROI of the motor cortex, meaning that like, if you have more iron in a vessel, the signal defaces across all channels. And since it's not call specific then Stark does not do anything about that. And here I would look, like to show you a few examples where Stark seems to be particularly advantageous. And if you have been at our presentation yesterday, you know that we are interested in high resolution activity mapping across cortical layers. And even in this thermal noise dominated regime where some channels just contribute noise only, we still have these um, different sources of signal clutter that are specific to individual channels. So here, for example, we have a fat alias crapper ghost at this location. In other channels, like in that one, we don't really have this crapper ghost anymore. So this channel actually could account for that. But here we have other problems, for example, this failure of the Nyquist ghost correction or this local phase correction and these kind of interference patterns. And since these um, features are local specific and coil specific, Stark can take good care of that and improves the 
a TSNR from this dark gray to the more bright gray TSNR values here with nicer layering patterns visible as well. And even at 9.4 Tesla, like in this data set acquired in Maastricht, we do see this uncoupling between the image SNR and TSNR, where for example here, the nice looking channels actually have the worst stability right on top of the motor cortex and where Star can really regain most of the TSNR at this location. And Stark really always works to improve the stability and almost never really reduces it. So I showed you it works very well for bold. It works even better for blood volume sensitive vaso. It works for 70 or 3 Tesla, Prisma in this case, for 64 or 32 channels, for high resolution and low resolution, for custom build and commercial coils. But Stark also has limitations. And the biggest, most annoying, and kind of embarrassing limitation is that you uh, need to have the extra hassle to deal with the more, bigger amount of data for all the individual channels. And if you have a 68 gigabyte pixel database like we do, you can basically acquire three slices for about 20 minutes until the hard drive is full, and you get these alarm symbols that the Siemens folks are surely familiar with. And if you don't want to deal with miffed colleagues or cranky technicians who cannot scan after you because the hard drive is full, you really need to figure out alternative ways to transfer the data or um, reconstruct them. And in the context of Siemens, we're actually starting to work on an ICE implementation. Another limitation of Stark might be that these weight factors, as shown here in examples, uh, have some local structures. So similar like Krapa, Stark only works very well if the head motion is smaller than a few centimeters. Otherwise, you would need to do the motion correction before the coil combination. I also want to stress that Stark only changes the relative weights of the coils, not the absolute weights. This means that Stark cannot do anything um, that is um, the same across channels. And examples might be physiological driven bold fluctuations. And you can see actually some physiological structures already in the TSNR improvement maps. And Stark obviously therefore also does not change any task induced activity as desired. And it does not correct for any global signal drifts. If you are interested in the coil-specific fluctuations and nevertheless want to um, benefit from the higher stability, you can always apply Stark in a Krapa kind of way, where you train your weights in the first time points and um, then apply those weights to the rest of the time series independently. So in conclusion, Stark is super cool. It is kind of an empirical engineering solution to deal with artifacts that are already in your data. It's not really a, a scientific approach. The more scientific approach might be to build a more stable scanner and avoid these artifacts in the first place. Unlike the name suggest, Stark is not really rocket science. It's super simple. You only need to change this one equation in your coil combination code. And we do have MATLAB and C++ code that we are happy to share. Thank you for your attention.